It's Monday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Mariah Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Hello, Nima Akasha Zibiri. How are you doing Mariah. this morning? I love the lemon combination. I mean, I really love this Thank outfit. You. Sweet sisters, Jalbab, that made this oh, collection. Wow. So I'm using my old um, wardrobe. Well, I'm grateful to God for life. I, I truly am. Um, over the weekend, uh, I mean, last week I was saying to you guys I wanted to go do a health check. I wasn't mm. feeling too well. Mm. So I got to the hospital and BP and all of those vitals taken showed I was completely stressed. Aww. And the doctors asked wow. me to sleep. They took the vitals again, no improvement. So ha. I was asked to go home, madam, go and rest. Mr. Zibiri says, take the entire year off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell, Tell your view, you, you need to rest. Oh. And then later, YK called and she was like, ah, Nima, you're the one suffering on the road. You need to rest. Yeah. Mm. Seconded everything. You need to. So um, I, I, uh, my friend, Lagos distributor of Ama Wonders, um, mm -hmm. sent me her machine and we're checking all through the weekend. And I sort of improved. Immediately I slept right. for eight hours. So wow. sleep is essential to everybody. Oh, my goodness. It is. It is. I had one, there was one sleep I slept on. Um, <laughs> oh, you can remember the particular I, sleep? Ah, <laughs> no, my Lord <laughs> Almighty. The benefit was deep. Sleep. I was knocked out mm. when I woke up. I woke up like like two a.m. in the morning. After I slept at like eight p.m., it was it was you know you could it you was, know you're yeah, resting. I know I'm mean, resting. That's what I'm struggling with. I when I sleep like that, yeah. I haven't. Mm. You have this um, thingy that tells you if you have a deep sleep. You know, it tells you. Yeah. Your watch yeah, yeah, yeah. tell yeah. you. Yeah. But I haven't slept well in months. I mean, yeah, I don't yeah. even need a watch to tell me to that. Tell that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so you didn't look it. Like sleep people keep telling me my eyes are tired. Somebody was saying, so, you know, you. I posted a picture and they said, "Ah, Tokpa, yeah, you look. Re your eyes look very, very tired." I said, "This is the season for me to be tired. When, when the season is over, you know my hemoglobin. Yeah. That hemoglobin thing. Would would it rest. Rest. In fact, it's is decreasing. Tosi was." Everywhere shouting and yeah. you know, mm. asking me to do the need. So I'm Hi, going to be... Let me come to you. I'm good. Um, also, very grateful to God for life. So, Saturday was elections, and um, my children decided to join our exercise after they did um, one round. You know, like, you know, you, I, I have twins. You can easily compare strength level between one from just like five minutes of work. is like, <laughs> Are we done? Yeah. Can I go home? The second one is like, let's go, let's go, let's go. And like, like these two are about five minutes apart. Like, <laughs> it's just, I realize that we, I need to encourage one of my twins to work out more. Yeah. And the other one is five. fine my with son exercising. Yes, like that gets tired quickly. The other girl, goodness, she's she she's energy. Old, she can just keep going. <laughs> ah, you know, so what we had fun, it was good. Grateful to God for yeah, all of that. I'm doing fine, great, uh, amazing. I didn't sleep well again, oh. but. We'll figure it out. Um, on Sunday, I did. Uh, I moderated a Yay. panel discussion. Nice. Yeah, it was really good. If I do say so myself. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it was v quite interesting, and um, you know, there was uh, something what was the that discussion about. Okay, it was just conversation on making hard decisions, mm. and there were people from various um, sectors, you know, of life: politicians, educationists. Um, you know, different places, CCME was on there as well. Ah. And we talked about the election. And it asked everyone in the audience to raise their hands for those who voted. voted. There were like three or four people. Oh, my Lord. But everybody wanted to talk politics. Everybody wanted to have a say about what's yeah. happening. It's but nobody is putting in the work yeah. to do it. Sorry about yeah. that. Anyways, we have an award. Yeah. Green and White Nigeria Achievers Award thanks to T... Thank you. They give to presented to the Your View TVC uh, special recognition award, most educative, entertaining program of the year in appreciation of your great work and providing the right information to the people. Twenty twenty one. Thank you so much. This means a lot to us. Our producers went there on our behalf. Thank you so much for being there. Thank you, Thank you for the Thank awards. You. We appreciate it, and this only spurs us to do more. You know, yes. I mean, we appreciate the recognition. Okay, guys. Let's go. There's a video actually in our projects of we're receiving there. What I'd like to show you this clip. And I want to say this, uh, Dr. Rafa James, show on TVC. <laughs> Your 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Um, we appreciate this award on behalf of the entire group, so WWE and on CBC. We appreciate this one and we say a very brief thank you to Ginger and us to do a lot more and um, serve you better. Thank you so much. Our producers, but well, those two of them, they're like five or six of them working behind us to make sure this show, Everything. Um, every single day, they work mm -hmm. so hard to make sure this show comes to you. Uh, so that was our question, Jabi, and that was Bumi Omokewa um, receiving the award on our behalf. Thank you, producers. We love you. We're going to go on a break now. When we come back, hmm. we're still in Nigeria. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Let's start with the nation. Federal government demands nothing short of Igbo's extradition. Resumed Kano trial raises anxiety in Abuja. Picture here of the freed pupils of the Bethel Baptist High School, Kaduna, being reunited with their parents. King's men to testify against ex jam boss Ojenridi in the 5.2 billionaire fraud trial. NCDC says 69 have died of COVID-19 in 11 weeks. Reps issue bench warrants on Amir Fili and Kiari. Okay, let's start with uh, these young children that were recently freed. Mariam, you have that story. Okay, so yes. Um, although I took in another story, but... Okay, which story do you want to take? Nation? Let me take the NCDC story. Okay. Um, so the NCDC has said that new infections in July has surpassed the numbers in May and June combined. So the numbers are increasing. Um, as of the time of the report, it says we have a, over 170,000 COVID cases. Um, 164 have been discharged, but we've had over 2,000 deaths so far. And um, the deaths in starting from May up until June have been, I think, 69 deaths so far. So in this month of July, the numbers are just skyrocketing. We need to be careful. They also mentioned that the Chinese government over the weekend donated about 470,000 doses to us. So that's good news. Like, we're getting more um, vaccines. That's um, doses of vaccines. So it's just important to keep to the protocol, wear your mask, wash your hands, keep social distancing right. and everything. Yeah. So, so um, I bench warrant. Which story you want to take? So the House of Reps um, has issued bench warrant for the arrest of major you know, agencies of government, starting with the CBN, the um, governor of CBN, Godwin Emefele, the group G uh, managing director of the NMPC, Mele Kiari, and 52 other gov heads of government agencies across, for, majorly for financial issues and unaudited accounts. So that's just to summarize the entire paper. But if you go through, you would see more uh, major infractions. Nimasa, you know, people whose accounts have not been audited, they're spending outside, you know, approved right. uh, limits by government or, you know, or, uh, appropriated amounts by government. All right, so, so Nigeria is saying they're ready for a diplomatic showdown if Republic of Benin does not extradite Sunday Igboho. According to them, they, that's all they're asking the government to do, and they've listed about six or so charges that um, Igboho is supposed to face in Nigeria, some of which are evidence of secessionist agitation, um, and engagement in violence, activities by arrogating the powers of law enforcement agencies, and there was one that was really surprising. It says that establishment of a militia group that caused the death of some innocent citizens. I'm not sure I've read that story where mm -hmm. any of these activities caused the death of anybody, but it's interesting that's one of the charges the country has against him. And it says um, both the Nigerian police force and the DSS have declared him wanted in respect for some criminal so, allegations. I, I so, don't want to support I'm, any secessionist movement, but the Nigerian government failed to do diplomatic showdown when the Benin Republic police crossed into our country and, and illegally took him and, took, and arrested somebody mm -hmm. here against diplomatic issues. Igbo is facing a crime that is known by law in the uh, Benin Republic. Can they just allow the country their sovereignty, exhaust whatever they want to do there, and if they have any arrangement that, you know, diplomatically allows for his extradition, it's okay. But would have loved that they flex this muscle when you know that, that abuse yeah. abuse happened in August. Please let me quickly take the jam story. So jam has so far remitted um, two billion naira to the coffers of the government. Um, last year they remitted seven billion. So far two billion. They said because they haven't concluded all their operations. Something more would come out of it. About um, 1.3 million candidates registered for. Um, um, candidates for 2021 jam, and this is where the revenue 
um, comes from, and I believe that a lot of people struggle with even writing for JAM. So I would really hope that JAM is not a revenue generating board. It should be strictly for conducting the exams. And let's make the exam more affordable for many Nigerians who are unable to do it right now. But two billion has been remitted, more to come. Okay, let's move on quickly now to the punch. Major headline, Kaduna bandits collect 50 million naira ransom, mm. hold back 87 students. Physically challenged girl threatens suicide, says parents, Clary, call me demon possessed. APC clears chairmanship seats in Ugundlasek, holds Lagos results. 15 corpses recovered, four missing as flood washes away stock bus. Quora Khan's reviews Supreme Court's judgment on boundaries affair by Balola. Buhari's gang order on terror reporting illegal, Sarah tells court. Beans, tomatoes, rice record 253%, 123%, 51% price hike, respectively. Bakari Lampoon's unnamed official says change of baton imminent. And uh, experts worry as 221 inbound passengers test positive in three weeks. Okay, start with the human interest okay, story. The human interest story. It's a very painful story of a Florence Umukoro who sent her story by WhatsApp to a, a correspondent with a, a punch right. newspapers, narrated how in 2011 she had a condition that, you know, caused her hearing. And, you know, after telling her parents, they, they sort of just, you know, and family members continue to insist that she has been possessed by demons, take her from religious houses to religious houses where they have her in chains beat her, try to exercise her, do all sorts of things, you know, and so at one point in time, they made her mom stand by and watch people strip her naked, what? ask her mom to, you know, wash her for that, you know. So when I, I read to the end to see the accounts of the parents, unfortunately, the father was saying that, yes, that he believes, his name is John Umukoro, that he believes that his daughter was possessed by demons because at the time when she complained of not hearing, she was taken to the general, um, Lagos Island General Hospital where they gave her drugs which she refused to use and so they assume and believe that because she didn't follow through her prescriptions that she had uh, demons stopping her from using them and that, you know, and that's why they've been dealing with her. Nobody has said how they checked mentally to see whether she was coping with the new condition, right. the new diagnosis just given, right. how she was dealing with it. This girl is 23 now. She's never been to school since the condition was uh, diagnosed. She's, and she's seen her siblings go to school in her narration, wow. and she feels that her parents just abandoned her. So mentally, of course, she was in shock. She well, reacted. Yeah, it was in another country, we need to do our parents. Have, parents. No, we no, we need to, we need in to, another country, she should have been handled differently. differently. No, we need to, yeah. we need so, to start strong punitive measures, jail term for churches yes. and religious, religious facilities houses. that are beating demons out of people. Yeah. Exactly. It, it, we need, as a country, we need to speak up against those yeah. things. You cannot beat demons. Mm. A country must say, bro, we don't no, beat demons. I think demon. you have just gone to, you have gone to a point where I think you're right. We need to have a topic. We mm -hmm. need to discuss this. Yeah, the beating this, children. Uh, yes. 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 This, this demon girl. is there. You're using cane to beat the yeah. demon out this of the child. This girl is mentally... Yeah. But right. presently okay. now, she's not in a boost. Let's, let, let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with the review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. All right, we're going to continue with Punch. There's a major headline of a candidate bandits collect 50 million ransom, hold back 87 students. You have that story, Maya? Yes, I do. But then I took it from Tribu, but I want to take it now so that we don't leave it too long. <clears throat> I'm mentioning that because they difference in figures of how much was paid for ransom. So 28 students on Sunday have been released by the abductors. We remember the students in Kaduna Baptist School. And um, that is out of the 20, that's out of 121 that were abducted. Um, that has brought the number to about 36 of them that have been released. Um, the spokesperson for the school has said that um, the abductors have said they will be releasing these children in batches. They have promised they will release them in batches. Um, according to the report, it says they asked parents if any ransom was paid. Some parents said they don't know about any ransom. They just know that they were asked to come and their children were released. Another parent said a ransom of 100 million was paid. That's why I mentioned, I think um, Punch says 50 million, but this person says 100 million was paid for their release. The school still says that uh, the Baptist 
sectors that they do not pay. Remember, they said they do not pay ransom. And the reason for them saying that is they do not believe in sort of um, giving money to people who have done something wrong, and so they do not pay ransom. But that does not stop any other interested parties to do what they need to do to release the students. They said the Kaduna State Government has assured them of securing the release of these students, and they are working, and um, the bandits have assured them that they will continue to release these students in batches. So that's where Actually, we are. Right. And this has been 20 yeah. days since yeah. the ab abduction of these I mean, the, the, you can see them crying. The children, obviously, yeah. they are traumatized. Ooh. There was a girl a that her father said she turned 16 in, as, in abduction, 16 years old. He said that she was abducted on the day she was about to start her NECO exams. Many sad stories. And they were praying for all those who are still in captivity mm. that they be released soon. So we're going to talk about the rise and hike. Yeah. So um, another major challenge every Nigerian is facing is the fact that food prices have really, really gone up, specifically beans. Tomatoes, rice, record beans has increased by over 253%. Um, price of tomato have increased by over 123%. And price of rice has increased over 51% just within this year. The statistics um, were very clear relating how the prices were in January and how the prices kept increasing month on month all through the year 2021. But the farmers are shouting that the reason for food hike is because of insecurity, that they, the major problem confronting them is they are unable to farm. Um, they are being kidnapped. They are being, their wives are being raped. They are being killed. The banditry is on the rise. And people are scared of going to the, into the farmland, into the farm to get their harvest. Um, other factors they say that are contributing to this is that um, security number one, COVID number two. All right, let's quickly talk about the corpses that were yes, found. Yes, uh, so um, there was a flood in an area called Dogua local government area in Kano State. Mm -hmm. And a bus with 19 passengers got stuck on the bridge and was washed away by the flood. Oh, so they God. have all occupants of the bus dead. They were able to recover 15 corpses and looking for the remaining five, and so uh, for the four of them. And then the emergency management um, agency, Ali, Ali Garko, mm -hmm. Confirmed the incident, but they are still, they have not seen the others. They just, you set, know, when they pray this prayer that may Nigeria not happen to you, these are the kind of things where uh, the government, the bridge. the bridge not work. You know, these are things that Change you just find thing. yourself. I, I don't, why I don't know is that when you build a bridge, it's supposed to be above <laughs> water. So, why, how do you build a bridge, even though the, they said the engine of the bus stopped working on top of the bridge? How do you build a bridge and the bridge is not above water and water overflows? I don't understand the circumstances of that well, bridge, but it's just mm, painful to yeah, know that this yeah. can happen and they can all die. And all. Mm. Oh my goodness. Well, freak, freak accidents happen everywhere, but also, you're right, there's the Nigerian factor. The point <laughs> North dares agitators, we can stand alone. Vax Buhari on Kano and Igboho. Banking female CEOs take over. Accounts for 30% of MD positions. School feeding parents, pupils decry reduction in food quantity. OIC, litigation hate inspire, says Murik. Anambra 2021, it's, a, it's, it's race against time for Abga and PDP. Okay, which story are we taking in so the, the point? Women, women, in, women MD across the bank, about 30% of banks now have, of all the deposit banks, have female MDs, starting with the GTB, um, a Miriam Olusonya is now their managing director. She took over from um, um, Agbaje. And we have um, FCMB also, Yemi Siedun. We have uh, Yemi Siedun took over from Adam Nuru. Um, we have other banks. Ireti Samuel Logbu, she's now the CEO of Citibank. Oluwatomi Shomefun is now the managing director of Unity Bank PLC. Um, Halim, I'm sorry. That's for Citibank. Then the uh, Alima Buba is the managing director for Ut Unity Bank. And yeah. all, a lot of banks like that, the names are many. Fidelity. Fidelity, you know. Zambic. And some, some right. uh, microfinance bank, Lotus Capital and all of that. Uh, Lotus Bank and all of that. And so you want to take? Yes. Please go ahead. So the parents and pupils of, <clears throat> of public primary schools under the program, National Homegrown School Feeding Program in Ocean State, are complaining that the quantity of food that they give them in these schools have reduced. You know, this program is supposed to feed students in school. And they said that it's this year especially, the quantity has reduced so much. Um, some of the students said that, ah, oh, we used to get chicken, we used to get apples, 
it, but now they don't even give them fruit at all. And this, for them, they think it's as a result of the increase in prices of food um, that we're experiencing everywhere. And they're asking for an increase in the budget for feeding for this program. Um, also, but that they spoke to the vendors who are in charge of providing this food, and they say, no, food quantity did not reduce, so it is still the same. But yes, we, are, we need an increase in our budget. So, you know, sometimes, I guess for the vendors, they don't want to be accused of reducing the quantity. So they're saying they haven't reduced the quantity, but it is, it is normal and obvious that it would reduce with the increase of prices. Yes, we are so afraid to admit that. Even FMCGs, all the FMCGs have reduced the weights. Milk, everything. Even the plantain chips and traffic. Everything has gone down. So it's not reduced to like this tiny thing like this. So I think you will pay the vendors more to say, yes, yeah, the prices are affecting the quantity of food that we're giving the children. So our consultative forum have said that, listen, the North can stand alone. That They're not scared of all these agitations across the country. That the the narrative that the North is in, it wants to retain um, the status as it because of what they're benefiting is wrong. That the, the, yes, oil has made that region lazy, but it doesn't mean that they cannot stand alone if that is what, if push comes to shove, obviously. So this was being said by the uh, Northern, the, uh, Northern Cons Arewa Consultative Forum to say that we are not afraid of it at all. In the North, we are, uh, we were as good as a country before colonial conquest. If you look at Sokoto Caliphate, how it was, it extended, it even extended to some areas where, where we were carved out of Nigeria. So they're saying that they have the strength to stand alone if it comes to that. Let me take the sad story of Regina, who was hacked to death and raped by a man alleged to be a drug addict, Osundo Wigwe, um, in Eza local government, um, Eboin State. The man was given, it was, there was a party, the lady went to, the ladies always try to take care of the man because he's like an, he's a, he's a, um, someone who had like a, a bit mentally unstable, the drug addict within the environment and went to give him food. Apparently, the, woman, the man was unhappy because the food they gave him was not the food they shared in the party. But the woman was just taking care of him. So they said the next day, while the woman was going to the market, the, the man trailed the woman and beat the woman and allegedly raped her. And the woman is dead. They found his, on, his boxers at the crime scene and found the woman's tights on him when they found him a um, few days after. They said the man had been sent from another village based on his criminal tendencies and the fact that he stole money but never caught red-handed like this. Sadly, his family has, the family of the regime, okay. the victim will now have to be the okay. reason he's been caught. Really sad story indeed. Let's move on quickly now to Daily Sun, INEC, NSA Army, others in 76 billionaire illegal loan scandal. APC sweeps Lagos and Ogun local government polls. Tension as Kanu's trial begins in Abuja. Um, Kaduna parents of kidnapped school children renarrate ordeals. Ohanese flays IPOV's attack on Edwin Clark. Okay, which story? Major headline, um, were you able to get that story? Okay, so I was reading the story, but I didn't have the full, um, I have not had the chance to read the full story. But it's looking like they're saying that there were certain funds that INEC, the Nigerian Army, Office of the National Security Advisor, others collected 76 billion naira from the Office of the Accountant General illegally. And these monies came from levies, rice levies, came from grain levies, um, and other sources, according to them, says 15% uh, wheat grain levy, 10% rice levy by Office of Accountant General, and it was revealed back in 2015, and there was supposed to be a repayment, and I'm thinking, does INEC repay loans? I don't understand how that, but the record revealed that the money totaling 17.92 billion was released to INEC um, in January, That's which was never repaid back to the source. Uh, another 31.4 31 was released to the Nigerian army, and uh, another 31 billion re released to NYSE. NYSC. So these are all the funds, but I, as I said, I'm not sure if, if they were supposed to actually collect those loans, but the reports the were saying that, that, need, illegal. that it's illegal mm -hmm. in the first place. Yeah, so let's talk about Kanu. And yes. um, he, um, the, 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 the report, Kanu, right? Yeah, the Kanu, sorry. There's a report that there's tension in Abuja because he's about to be arraigned in court today. And the tension is uh, because some of the members of IPOP and his supporters have said that they will come out in their numbers to come and support him in the court. But um, I think um, they said the DSS is trying to put a stop to that so that they, do not ha they don't show up. But his counsel is saying that he should be allowed to come to the court to support him. Um, he's, been, he's in court facing trial 
for treasonable felony. And we also remember that he had jumped bail in 2017. So Okay. That's all we can take on Front Page Review. When we return, we move on to our hot topic of the day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So reports of the Bethel students on release reminds us again of the issue of insecurity in our land and what the government is doing concerning it to curb and stop this before it gets totally and completely out of hand. In reports that we had today, even in Daily Trust and I think also in Punch, they were suggesting that some kidnappers are actually collecting ransom via the banks, the financial institutions. And Daily Trust report specifically said that they tried to trace um, the name of the particular woman that was abducted, I think, at the Mandela Junction. And um, she paid 500000 naira into a specific account to be released. And then they tried to see if they can find um, the roots of this. But obviously, there was difficult. And, and um, um, the Daily Trust correspondent had spoken to uh, Mr. Yakubu, uh, Umar Yakubu, who was a financial crimes expert and former EFCC Financial Crimes Commission um, um, officer, where he's saying that detecting um, kidnappers these days is becoming a political choice hmm. because of other parts of the world where criminals like this are taken, they are, they, 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 they're handled 100% by the system. But now, if, because these people have the audacity and confidence to even use the financial system, it means that they know they cannot get caught. So when we are faced with these kinds of situations, what do we do? I mean, I was reading several reports that are saying that if we want to fix this problem, we can fix it. You know, it's interesting how, um, I mean, I, I don't know what your thoughts are, because th th that, that was quite painful. If it's true, because I think two papers carried the both punch, yeah, and I, I, it's I, true that some of these kidnappers, you know, there are some that are bandits in the bush. But this woman said they were actually taken into the bush, you know, and they, they gave them some kind of um, uh, um, a liquid, liquid to drink. They had codeine. All her colleagues slept. She refused to drink it, and she didn't sleep, but she saw it. But even though that she, she was conscious, she couldn't even recognize exactly, but she, she knew that they took them to one house, and they were the only ones there until the ransom was paid. So for me, um, I already said that bandits that can shoot down a fighter jet are no longer bandits, they are terrorists. Um, kidnappers who have held our country to a ransom right now because everywhere, it's not even any region, they are in the north, they are in the south, they are in the west. Kidnappers, we should, it should, we should, we should proscribe anyone found as a kidnapper, as a terrorist of our peace in this nation, mm -hmm. um, causing economic um, um, instability in our country. So let's deal with them as the criminals they are. I've, and I said it last week, it is impossible for people to get a hundred million naira and that money disappears. It's impossible. Ransom monies, we, we've, we've now, it, it's not like this thing is larger than life. It's not. It, it's, not, it's not impossible to find these people if we have a willing set of hands working, all hands on deck to say we must find these monies, we've marked it anywhere the money shows up in bank because that money can be spent like that. So we must find a way to trace. There was a time that um, the, I took a story of how a man was a bread, was a um, person that was selling, had a bakery that was selling bread to kidnappers. And they were able to trace that he was supplying the bread and that they would pack the bus. They, they found one of his boys that was supplying bread. There are many ways this money comes out. But are we really tracing the monies? And until we create a very, very strong, let me death sentence on any found kidnapper, we are not going to solve this problem. Yes. If, and it's not death sentence that they'll leave them in the prison for five years. <laughs> death sentence <laughs> like the way we used to, when, when, when we were dealing with, with um, um, armed robbery, that they take them to Bar Beach and shoot Fire. them, yeah. you know, firing yeah. squad. Yeah. That is the kind of yeah. death sentence we need to let have for to kidnappers as soon as they are caught. Mariah, it's yeah. the audacity for me, the audacity of I using the system to carry out crime and to carry out crime so openly mm. and so easily without getting caught. First of all, we're now, we've now moved to banks. We have talked and complained about tracing numbers. They say they used phone numbers to call to ask for this ransom. They're on the phone for 
for minutes and minutes on end. I mean, abroad and on the movies, we see that I just need you to keep him on the phone for five seconds. And in that five seconds, I will catch the person. Here, they have conversation, they are gisting, they are saying, no, no, come back, no. They are even negotiating over and we cannot trace them. Of course, the next thing is to do banks. Next thing, they will knock on your door and say, I've come to collect the ransom. Because obviously, there's a system that does not work. And the thing is that the systems are manned by human beings, by people. So somehow, yes, government has its own, but we're all involved. Yeah. How, so what do we do to banks like this? So banks are unaware of this payment? Is the police aware? Okay, so there are two things. You know there was a time where we, we talked about when um, the um, Senate, I think, was saying that for, all, for anybody that pays ransom, that person will be criminalized. Mm. And we said, well, if you do it that way, people will find ways to pay yeah. for their ransom without letting the police know. So if we have a group of people who are doing this and paying for their ransom without letting the police know, I guess the bank is not aware, mm. so there's no tracing. Mm. So you see why it's important that when we sit down to have this conversation, we need to have it with all stakeholders. What's even more painful, like Nima, they have the account number here. The name of the account is ah. Badawi Aba Enterprise. BVN. <laughs> they have BVN, you have all these. The audacity. So I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand why, why this is so difficult for the Nigerian government to curb. For me, it's the same as the experts said in the paper, it's a lack of will. <laughs> and it's very sad. You know, what's the name of the um, cable, the, the, the secret uh, journalist that went to uncover the prisons the last time? Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. I think, yes. He also did something on kidnapping in Ikiti State, I think, or those states. And the audacity with which the kidnappers and the police refused to follow him. So I have a case that I've been trying to do track and arrest, and I found that there's no server to do the track and arrest. <laughs> and it's been like that. But when a high-profile person was kidnapped, and then they were able to track and arrest the people, you know, something recently, I was saying, I called my contact and said, ah, why people not do my, I said, madam, their own is expensive, they are to, you know, resource. Like even our neighboring countries, and it's a West African issue. So we have governments sitting and watching. And you see this deleterious report about paying through accounts is not news. Not. On the Bini or Expressway, most kidnapped victims, when they come out, say, I it's just alert. paid. It's a lot. And, you know, for me, at this point, is the trauma that they go through make the victims unwilling to even go and make a report so that the police will start to follow through. Then when you give a police an account number that says, I paid here, this is what I paid for and everything, and they are wasting time because you're not high profile, you're not, you know, government official. It is not making news headlines enough to shake tables. We see every time our kidnappers come back, they report that their people were kidnapped. They report that they paid ransom. Nobody is following through. We know government and, and does not watching, have the will. I was watching a real, follow through and watching, make an example. I was watching of an interview very recently where somebody was saying that the sponsor, we've, heard, we've talked about sponsors of these bandits for years. Mm -hmm. And to today, no one has been arrested. Mm -hmm. Some government doesn't say, we have their names. We, we know who they are. Which is, yeah, we'll start so calling them we'll call we them have a case. We, we have a case where Wadume was a high-profile kidnap kingpin in this yes. country. And he was arrested. arrested. And on his way to, to he get it, he was released in a, in a Van Damme style of movie. By? Till today, by, by army. And to today, he named the army officials who killed three policemen yes. in this country. Yes. And we so have not got to the verdict? His verdict, have we, have we, have have we started the arra arraignment? Have we yeah. prosecuted? <laughs> verdict, Bao. And mm. the matter is sitting in, silent yes. in this country. This man... Was, was claiming, pictures showed how he sponsored politicians in Niger State and how he sponsors people into office. So you wonder, what exactly is the will? Is, is, are these people not, are they not the ones Part who are looking for? Of this entire exactly. process. So, the entire process. The, the average kidnapper that has been released, most of them, when they give their report, the, 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 no, the average kidnapper yeah. that was arrested, arrested. Mm -hmm. say they get 10,000 naira, 50,000 naira, so who collects the millions? the millions? Who is collecting the millions? How is the millions me, being transported? Let me go on a break because uh, it, 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 every phone call is done through a server. When you look at the pictures, the pictures of these young children As that were recently, it it's heartbreaking. And you just wonder if our governments are seeing these pictures. Let's go on a break, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
Thanks for staying with us. So we just got a report that our correspondent, Celestina Aire, is in the court in Abuja as um, Namdi Kanu's trial is started. We just try to see what's going on right there, what she can see. Celestina, are you there? I can hear you. Good morning. Good morning. So tell us, um, who have you seen in the courts and when does the proceedings start? Okay, usually proceedings are the first time at 9 a.m., but we are yet to be ready to I can't hear you, Celestina. It's, okay. it's a bit... Okay, if you can say that the court is not speaking here, and lawyers and litigants and few journalists are already in the court here, and also the court is not here. We still can't hear you. I'm so sorry. Maybe we'll have to call you back. There are a few questions we need to ask you anyway, but we'll try to reconnect with you. We're having issues um, with, with hearing you. Now, going back to the issue of insecurity, yes, Nima, I was going to let you come yes. in here. So I, I, I was saying that, you know, it's obvious that we, we don't have the will. If we have kidnappers who Abba Kari's team was supposed to be the high-profile team, where's this team? Why were they unable to have Evans, at least by now, mm. facing a full sentence for what he did? We had witnesses on Evans' case who, who were willing, you know, who had details. The, the reports in the papers were detailed all through. How many years after? Evans is even suing the federal government for his fundamental human rights. Now. Yes. And we have Wadumi. Three lives lost. Families displaced. Because, you know, the families of members of those three high police officers who went on that impossible mission to arrest Wadumi are now, you know, uh, uh, you know displaced because their breadwinners have been killed. If not for anything, justice for those three family members, government must sit on it and say, okay, no, I must make an example of this so that I deter others. One of the highest, you know, uh, a, a job of, uh, of law is to deter criminals. But we fail every this, time. These pictures are so you know, the videos are really, 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 really bad. When, when you, when you see this, like, there were two groups. Where first we had Boko Haram that was pushed by an ideology, mm -hmm. which is thought, oh, they wanted to have a caliphate within the state, you know? We had that. And then these new industry, of bandits, Banditry. kidnapping, yeah. and so if you are finding it difficult to find Shekara at the time or to even stop Boko Haram, why are we still finding it difficult to arrest these kidnappers? All the ones we've traced, yeah. what have we done? Are they in prisons? Are they why, been arrested? Why, why are we, we have in prison? Why are we finding it difficult to create? make a scapegoat out of the system. Exactly. Because if people know, if there's impunity would improve when we know that I can pay my way through. Impunity would improve when people like Wadume can, like they can still be alive. Or Evans. Or okay. Evans can still be alive. Yes, impunity would improve. Yeah. And for every time a phone call is made, there is a, like, there's a, a base station that takes the call and bounces it every time a phone right. call is made. Right. So it's possible for you to know where the triangu triangulating it. We have enough scientists that can do this thing. It is not okay. rocket science. Let me, I'll Why come to you, Marion, in a second. I'm told that uh -huh. Celestina is back. Okay. Celestina, are you there? I'm here. Oh, fantastic. We can hear you better. So, we're saying that you are in the courts in Abuja where Namdi Kanu's case is about to start. Mm. Could you tell us yes. who you've seen at the courts, who's arrived, and um, has Namdi himself arrived, his lawyers? And we're told that I think IPOP members asked to be in court this morning. Have you seen any of them also at the courts yet? Okay, security is very tight. Uh, we are yet to see the defendants in the canon court. But lawyers and litigants are in the courtroom waiting for the judge who is yet to arrive. And uh, it has been very serious um, task getting into the courtroom today because the DSS barricaded every corner leading to the courtroom and been acting on the lead given to them by the Federal High Court for journalists to who would cover the proceedings as well as lawyers who will be in the courtroom today. So we are waiting for Justice Binta Inyanku and also the defendant. Okay. All right. So we'll just keep um, connecting with you as soon as the proceedings start so we can get an update. I'm told that they barred some stations and newspapers from coming in. So we'll, we'll be relying on you for updates uh, as okay. much as we can throughout the day. Okay. okay. Thank you, Celestina. All right. Coming back to the issue of insecurity. Yes, Mariam. So, uh, you know, where this kidnapping, to be fair, I tend to see a lot of the arrest of kidnappers on social media. I don't see a lot of it on, you know, mainstream media. So I think also there's a part of what story is much more sensational, you know, in, that's in the reporting of these stories. So I see many of them, they are caught. But one thing I have not seen yet is maybe the very open public way of um, 
trying them, just like the way we're trying the canoes. Okay. I guess because they're high profile people, mm. you tend to put a lot of um, spotlight on them, but we need to make it public when they are caught, when they are prosecuted, when the sentences that they get, so that people can see this and learn from it. Because kidnapping has almost become like a business. I mean, there's just so yeah, many. It's a business. It's a business. People have taken like as a business that, OK, if I decide to just do one or two kidnappings, maybe I'll be able to cover up my debts and buy one or two things and move on. And the reason why people will sit down and think that it's an option is because they don't think that, because they feel they know that you can get away with it. You can get away with it to the point that nobody's going to trace your phones, nobody's going to trace your BVN when you even collect, you know, when they send monies to you via bank. So that is the problem. We need to do better in catching these people, prosecuting them, watched, and making an example of them. I watched a the documentary about DB. Cooper, some, some guy that was supposed to be the one to hijack something. I mean, according to the, the, the documentary, he's the only hijacker that has gotten away in, in the history of America, in American history. And they gave him money. I mean, after he hijacked the plane, he came down, um, he landed the plane, got the, um, the, um, the, member, the passengers, passengers off the plane. He took, he took off again, and then using the parachute, he, he fell off. Now, many, many, many years ago, maybe 30 or 40 so years ago, a little kid found some piece of the, of the cash that was given to him. And he, she reported it to the police. Police took it back to the bank. And they were able to know the serial number. Many years ago, this was the money we gave to D.B. Cooper. This was about 30, 40 years ago. The point is that these monies were paid for ransom. Are we recording them? Do we know where it's been spent? No. Are we where, money where where the money where the police refuses to be involved? So, you know, it, they so, can trace this when the government is involved. Right now, the government, the governor of Cardinal has said, I'm not paying ransom for no, The point I'm doing right now is that for you to buy an ammunition, so you're a kidnapper now. Yeah. Eh? I pay you money. Mm -hmm. You want to buy ammunition from Tokwe? Yes. You are not getting ammunition in Nigeria because ammunition is not in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. You have to import it somehow. Yeah. So there's a trail of how you even got it in the US mm -hmm. to Nigeria in the first place. Mm -hmm. Now, you between you trans transacting between you and you, can't I the money I'm paying you, can't I trace that money exactly. and use you to find her? No, oh, no, and this is how we're going to answer you now. Yes, please. We're just sending an answer. Everything is traceable. It's traceable, yeah. but what if it's not done through the right channel? Individuals mm -hmm. are paying for so, their ransom without involving without government. Involving so the money is not going through the police. So but, it's not like there's a code that is kept let's or see the who money is stained. They, they okay. stain money. Uh -huh. They stain ransom money. Like let's we, even, we've seen these things let's now. Let's even leave the payments out of it. Where, where do we put the issues of the high-profile investigations that have got our police officers, yeah. some is still in service, the promotion that we gave them? Mm -hmm. Without they, a prosecution, they do for mm. is it that the, the court strike, does it affect that prosecution for five years? Mm. Let me go on a break. When we come back to continue this conversation, stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Staying with us. So before we move on to our conversation, um, we're, we're getting some live pictures of the courts in Abuja when um, the Kano's case is about to start. Uh, we should show some pictures, so I, I would like you to stay on with TVC throughout the day as we take you into the proceedings in the courts in Abuja as Nam Kano and his entire legal team are there, and also the prosecution is also there. Uh, we'll see them as, as we get more feeds sent for you. We'll be keeping you posted as the case um, start throughout the day. Now, so we, do, do, we, we've spoken about um, body language. So yes, we've, we've talked over and over about the kidnapping, the, ran, the ransom being paid. But again, I've always talked about posture and body language of our government here. Recently, we all heard that the, is it the Emir or was it Tarabas, which state was it, where he was saying directly, ho yeah, that those who are so killing the people in the communities, they should be killed. He was not even unapologetic about that. Many people applauded him for that daring statement. But we've not seen the presidency or anybody respond. Because remember the last time that President um, Governor Akere Dolu said something similar against the killer headsmen are not registered in the forest. Now listen, get out of our forest. If you're not registered, if we come there, we'll, we'll get out. I'm, I'm, I'm attacking to arrest you. There we saw Afemi Adeshino and uh, Garbashe come out to condemn his utterance, saying that he was being... Um, yeah, I can't remember the exact words he used at the time, but they, they, they spoke against it. But we've not heard anybody from the presidency speak against the Emir who, who had directly 
almost like, saying verbally that his people, the, the, the JTF in his community, should kill, shoot at sight when they see any of these killer headsmen in their, in their forest. Well, uh, so that I, goes back to the body language. Yeah. Is that we, is, are, they, are we being selective in who we are condemning for these oh, crimes? The, the allegation of selective, um, selective prosecution, selective attack from our government is very, very rife all over social media in the way we go after a certain region or certain people and some other people are not getting the same fair treatment right from the inception of this government. There's been a body language of headsmen and my people is the head of um, headers. So we've had that rhetor rhetorics outside and we've not seen our president obviously say, he said we I should, don't no, support He told it. us to shoot our sight, remember? Yes. Is there anybody with AK-47 shoot our sight? So what I, what, the part that I feel very concerned about is the psychology of those children. If you see yeah, their definitely. faces, the children look, they, they don't look like, they, they look traumatized. Yes. Those children look scared. traumatized. They look scared. Look at who, is, baby boy. who is dealing, who is helping, who is going to help those children? Who is going to talk to those parents? There's a woman that fainted when she didn't see her child. Who is going to deal with those ones? Are we thinking of the impact of this business, this seemingly lucrative business, the impact on society? Are we looking at them like collateral damage that... Uh, so win some, you lose some. Mm. We are going to deal with this. Or are we understanding the fact that these children, the remaining children left in captivity, how would they feel knowing that some of their classmates are back with their parents and okay. they are still stuck? Thank you for taking us there because it's also the part yes. of the, the educational proposition that we've worked so hard mm. to get people from various communities to be part to of school. education, go to school. Mm. Many parents say, and thank you so much. I will, I will teach my child at home. In fact, let him go and farm. No, not, not if I let me find another skill. They can't even farm. They, they can't even farm. The farm is not safe. So why not just have your child in the house? Let me take this call. Good morning. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. You're live. You're you? Go ahead, please. Yeah, good morning to you. Good morning. Nima, good morning. Back to the Sarah. Uh, Morayo, see, I want to tell you some facts to this morning. I don't know maybe I have a little time. I travel for Salah. Morayo, our intelligence gathering is so poor in this country. If you could remember the incident happening in Gagan, Igaga as a town is almost uh, 20 kilometers to my own village. Morayo, getting to my village, this is in this Salah period, I did a, 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 a lot of investigation concerning this ex man. Morayo, I could tell you this. Do you know that people have been kidnapping in various uh, villages? That does not know to we for all of us. When getting to my place, they mention almost 20 people that are confronted in my place. They are rich people. So they say some of them pay 30 million, some of them pay 50 million. The, 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 the least one pay 5 million. Morayo. And I ask, how come this thing is going on and then we don't know about it? They say no. They were going to police station telling them nothing happened. Morayo, now they were not telling me since the incident in the Gaga happened. And then there's some, uh, this man that was arrested last time, I think uh, the OPC arrested him, and then they let her go the OPC go. people, girl, and then they transfer them to Ibadan. That's a particular guy. He decided the guy arrested the, the, the said, and then they tell you that uh, some of the make sure that he left that place. They, they told me that since when those guys leave, they, they sleep with the high clothes now. In fact, they were returned to farm now. But before now, before now, the, if you even go to your farm, the ex-man will come to the farm. In presence of you, they will be uprooting your cassava and giving you to a cow. I just you said cannot that say anything. Thing. Thank you very much, Jacob. So intelligence gathering mm. is low, but you catch Igboho in Benin. Intelligence gathering is low. You can mm. catch somebody in Kenya. Mm. Intelligence High gathering profile. is low. You, you, so, so you find a way. Somehow this system works for what but, it but wants what, to work yes. for. Yes, which, is, which, is, which sort of buttresses the skepticism some people have about the fact that the law is partial and the execution of the law is partial and it's skewed to favor some people. It's really sad. These are Nigerian citizens. Those children are citizens of Nigeria. Those children can become the president's could become the president tomorrow, but you are not letting them get access to good education. They cannot feed themselves because food cost has gone, beans has gone up by over 200% in less than, in just six months of this year. So what is our government doing? It's not yeah. body language alone, it's and not then, lip service. You know, talking about these students, we are talking about them. Some of them have been released, but the students from the Islamia school in Niger State are still in captivity. All of and them. it's silence. Silence so they're, everywhere. They're, they're silence on everywhere. Silence everywhere. Silence. So what is happening? So Have ran has the ransom been paid? Are they asking for ransom? Is the government involved? You know, there was a time the parents, I mean the 
the head of the school, we we it was reported how he was crying and everything. Mm -hmm. It's gone. You know, I always wonder about the state of mind of yeah. those the victims and the parents. This particular one that was reported today, we had someone who said that he almost died just knowing that his daughter was in captivity. Oh. He he almost he could not believe it. I was finally lucky to be among the lucky ones for her to have been released. Imagine 20 days, day in and day out. You wake up, you go to bed to sleep. If you can sleep, that your child is in captivity with bad people. It's nightmares. Who do it's anything to those children. Look at run. the expression on the faces of those little boys that we saw. Children. What they have gone Lovely through. Lovely children. Now, this is another thing that we need to start talking about. How to take care of them, about their minds, rehabilitate them. What they have seen, what they have gone Therapy. through. Therapy. We're doing a lot of this service when we do not do the right thing as a government. It's not just about money. Williams from Worry. I mean, it's just so oh, bad. Impact is yes, so I have deep. a call. Good morning, Williams. Are you there? Yes, I'm, I'm still here with you. You're live. Go ahead, please. Okay, good morning. Morning. Um, I'm a first time caller. Welcome, Welcome to the show. show. Okay, thank you very much for your program. Um, and uh, I want to personally thank you guys for telling Nigerians what is happening in the country. Most especially what is happening in Kano, uh, in Kaduna, and uh, most uh, northern part of the country, is uh, uh, some of us in the south, we see it as a well-planned and coordinated mm -hmm. uh, approach to make sure that Christians, most especially Christians, are eliminated in the north. Mm. I can't imagine myself, my own child is kidnapping, kidnapped in my house. And government is not taking any effort. And when the certain, 17 certain uh, governors met, the presidency itself went against them. Imagine Williams, let me pause you for a second. Williams, Christians. Williams, remember the Islamist children? Uh, All of them are Muslims. They are also being kidnapped. So I don't think this should be about it's Muslim or Christian. Christian. Don't you think? No, it, it has become a business. It yeah. has become a business. Yeah, right. Because I remember last last week, um, journalist angered when um, uh, one one of uh, one one of the callers said that. Um, the, what is happening is geared towards Aerofy. I said no, because this is pre-planned arrangement to make sure that children don't go to school in the north. And that's what is happening. And I think that Nigerians need to speak against it. Nigerians all over the world need to speak against it, since the government are not willing to do something. And number two, by 2023, elections are coming up. What is our stand about this government? We need to vote out this government. I am not trying to use it as a platform to say that we are calling on this government to be removed. Mm. Please, Mara, oh, we, we have to run, we unfortunately. Need to talk about the fact that the body language against the president is to stop journalists and stop media houses and reduce reportage and reporting process of these things happening. That's a different topic for a different day. We have to go on a break. What, we can't end this conversation. We have to continue it. We're going to break. When we come back, move on to our Let's Talk. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So many of us know that Lagos State, we just concluded the local government elections over the weekend. And to review the entire process, we have three guests in the studio with us. We have Mr. Eze Nwagu, who is a member board of the Yaga Africa, and also the executive director, uh, Peering Advocacy and Advancement Center. Welcome to the show, sir. Are you there? OK, we also have Mr. Deji Doati, who is the Lagos PDP chairman. And we have Mr. Shaye Oladejo, the Lagos APC chairman. Spokesperson, I believe. Are you there? Good morning. Yes. Okay, good, good to morning. have you. So let me be sure who I have here. I have um, the spokesper spokesman APC Lagos, Mr. Shaye Oladejo. Are you there? Yes, I'm very much oh, around. Great. Thank you. And I have Mr. Deji Doati, Lagos PDP chairman. Are you there, sir? Yes, I am. Oh, great. So let's good start morning. with the two of you. Since Mr. Eisenhower is still not connected. Let me start with the PDP 
Chairman. Um, I read in the papers today where the Lagos State APC was saying, oh, they flawed the elections in Lagos and uh, mm -hmm. Ogun State. In your view, did we have a free and fair election from your own perspective? <laughs> or did you even oh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm happy. I'm, ha I'm, I'm happy that you are laughing over there because um, definitely you know that um, the PDP standards of last night, right from the national down to the state, is that we have rejected the outcome of that election. We've rejected the results in, in its entirety. We do not have anything to do with those results. Those results are biased. Biased results. Um, the will, that's not the will of the people. Um, having said that, you know, I like the fact that the question is there, but the answer is for everybody to see. Um, the answer is straight. There was total voter apathy, both on, on all, in all the local governments. Even the APC members did not come out to vote for the APC. You understand? Yes, it's a council election. We know that uh, everything is going to go the way of the state. You understand? Because they are the ones that own LASEC. LASEC we, were, we were in LASEC from Wednesday or Tuesday last week, asking them when we're going to move sensitive materials. They did not give us any answer. They said it wasn't our business. They moved the sensitive materials at night. They moved it to the council offices where the candid their candidates are the ones in the council office anyway. You understand? So we went there trying to talk to them again to let us in. The hoodlums came out, all their thugs, all their tough boys. Everybody came out okay. to send us away. You know, at the end of the day, we have, uh, we have situations in 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 uh, in 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 this election whereby look at this look at this you understand look at this these are what they did to our boys when when we were there you understand you know and All I right. told them look, Mr. There, Dorothy, let me pause you for right. a second because I have quite a lot to ask you today but let me hear from the APC man uh, Mr. Shayola Dejo same question um, what are you what's your own review on the elections last weekend let me come to Mr. Chei. Okay, th thank you very much. Yes. Well, the, the election has come and gone, and I must say that very true to character, the PDP chairman, if I could call him chairman, because a few days to the election, there was a court ruling flooring his office as the chairman, so I'm surprised you are not having two chairmen on this program this morning. Be that as it may, the election for us wasn't perfect, very far from being perfect, like, like other elections to another part of the world where we've had democracy forever. What it will call voters' apathy is what I will call reasonable turnout of voters. He said APC members didn't come out to vote. He faulted everything about the process, apart from the fact that he's heading a divided house, which cannot stand in any way, anyway. And uh, you, you will agree with me, o over time, this has been the refrain of PDP looking for excuses for losing the election. This time around, they became more creative. They, they even said ahead of time that they stood no chance of winning the elections. How could PDP have won the elections? In a state where they are bringing nothing on board, in a state where they cannot provide credit for op opposition, in a, play, in a state where their ineptitude is so obvious. You just wonder what the perennial crisis in their party is all about anyway to fight over eight long failures in the advent of democracy. He said we own uh, 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 LASEC. Well, that, that's laughable. LASEC is an independent body empowered to conduct elections. And that's the way it is throughout the, all the states of the Federation. So you just wonder that he could force every process okay. in the election, but the disunity in his party, right. which would definitely guarantee their failure. In terms right, let me time. get a few more questions in for you. So, uh, I, you know, this is why people run away from politics. The conversation isn't around APC or PDP. The conversation is around elections that took place over the weekend, local government elections. This is, for me, the most important elections for the citizens of Lagos and Ogun State, where there was a high level of voter apathy. And I don't think it's a convention of, oh, PDP did not do, APC did not do. It's a case of, we should be worried. APC and PDP should be worried that you have people that are being voted to be local government chairmen with less than 10% of the population they are going to be governing, coming out to vote.
That is a worrisome situation. It's a threat to our democracy. And that's the question I want us to address. How worried are you both about the case of voter apathy at let the local start, government level? Let me start with um, um, the chairman, PDP. Go ahead, sir. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to say that the last um, uh, commentator on your channel uh, hit the nail right on the head. What, why do we have less than 10% come out to vote for a council election? The gentleman there was talking about the divided house. I remember that just a few, just last week, Jando, who is a member of APC. Hello. Uh -oh. It's frozen. We can't hear you, Mr. Please, let's not discuss politics. Wait. Let's just deal with the issue. Hello. Okay, so we're having we're having a freeze, but let me. I'm told that Mr. Um, Ezenwa is with us. Hello, sir. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. Good to have you. So, since you are the neutral party here, let me start with you over because the two party men are giving us the party conversations. Mm -hmm. But we'd like to hear, as an independent uh, observer of the election that just took place, what are your concerns concerning the voter apathy part? And the fact that it seems people just don't, are not interested anymore in the, in the political process, electoral process in, in, in our state. Well, I, I think uh, it's, it's better to have a, a framing, a proper framing. Uh, our attitude to subnational governance generally is, is very poor. I have continued to make the point that we seem always to be tested in that which is far away, and the one that is close by is really not our concern. Whether it is elections, whether it has to do with the issue of budget, whether it has to do with appointments in states, whether it has to do with autonomy of institutions within the states, we are completely not interested in participating. So we can, whether it's in Lagos or in Aquaibom or in Sokoto, we've seen complete non-disinterestedness of the citizens in the affairs of local governments. I can ask um, very educated people in Lagos whether they know that their local government councils appropriate money, that they have budgets from which they spend. So the challenge of abysmal uh, low turnout of elections that we observed in Lagos is something that should bother all of us from the point of first and foremost to say, if it were to be a governorship election, if it were to be um, a discussion about national appointments, the kind of interest that it will generate will not be the same. I was in Lagos. I traversed a quite uh, a, a good a good uh, space within 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 Lagos, and as I was going, I was tuning into different radio stations to have a glimpse of of, of of their programming, and it will surprise you that out of ten of the radio stations that I was listening to, just about three or four we are discussing local government election in Lagos. So we are still talking about uh, the, the, uh, the kidnap of children and the rest of it, when something that borders on the welfare, the livelihood of the people who live within in that environment is going on, and the people who shape narratives were not even interested. So having laid that background, it's also important to say that last year perhaps did not share good practices from INEC they would have ordinarily invited the political parties to, to apprise them of their processes and the things that they need to do and carry them along. INEC will take political parties to the Central Bank of Nigeria where electoral materials are ferried out from to the different local government areas. That's, that's, just, that's not supposed to be whether the political parties want right. it or not. It's just to ensure that they confidence for the elections okay. is very hard. So um, they, they put those materials very late. The punctuality index for the election was, was poor. 
as at 10 a.m. in the morning, less than 25% of the polling units were opened. By 11.45, 69.2 polling units were not up and running. Wow. That, that's a huge challenge. There is also the challenge of training, training for the officials. They collected uh, 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 card, smart card readers from INEC. They didn't train the officials well enough to use them. In many of the polling units, they did not even bring them out of the parks. There was no adherence to uh, COVID-19 non-pharmaceutical protocols. There are no te temperature tests for anybody. Most of even the, 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 the officials were not uh, properly, were, were not wearing those masks. The, the, the voters themselves were not, those that eventually came, were, didn't even care about that. I think generally, what we need to do is to also say that I was talking to... All right, let me pause for a second. Let me quickly go on a break. When we come back, we continue the conversation. Stay with us and drive back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. To stay with us. So we're still reviewing the last weekend's elections in Lagos State. Let me come to Mariam because they have our guest on the show. Uh, what are your thoughts on this and why would you like to ask a question? Okay, for me it's that um, voters' apathy, voter apathy is, is to be something that all parties are concerned about, especially going forward. I feel like it's an indicator of what we may see <clears throat> when the other elections come forward. What are the parties themselves doing right now? I'm talking to both um, party spokespeople, please. What are you doing, given the results you have received? What are you doing or what are you planning to do going forward to engage the electorate better? Let me start with the APC spokesperson, Mr. Shayek. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a topic, the uh, apathy during elections is a topic I've been very much interested in addressing properly. We need to move away from partisanship now. Talking about apathy during elections, we're all equally guilty. The political parties, the media, the umpires, generally sort of Nigerians and Lagosians as it were. It would be interesting to know if I could just throw back the questions at the panel in the studio. How many of you actually created the time on Saturday to vote? The best way to influence the electoral process is to participate actively. A situation whereby we all form armchair critics of government policies and programs, and we do nothing to influence the electoral process when the opportunity presents itself. We are more interested in the Big Brother Niger, the Olympic Games, rather than activities that will impart on Nigerian well-being as a citizen, as Nigerians. <laughs> to, to say the least, is unfortunate. So moving ahead, we all have a duty to mobilize all and sundry to show more than the passing interest <laughs> in whatever goes on, especially when uh, election time comes. So all the political parties, the media, the LASEC, INEC, as the case may be, have a duty to ensure that our people participate actively. And the, uh, and the opposition parties too, especially, we have reasons to, to provide what they will consider to be okay. a better opportunity let for me, people Let me let the PDP forward. man answer the same question before I come to Nima. So now that you have this data that lots of people didn't show up, what do you hope to do about it? I'm talking to Mr. Doherty now. Are you there? OK, I, I, I think he's still frozen. Hello, hello. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead, hello. please. Yes. Yes, please. Um, what I'm trying to say here is that um, I do appreciate and I do respect the gentleman from the APC. But you see, when you're talking about voter apathy to the extent that we saw on Saturday, that is a state of helplessness, a state whereby the people have lost total hope and interest in an election that is being conducted by an umpire that does not have any honor. Just, I'm really sorry to say, this is not a situation whereby someone is watching BB Niger or anything like that. 
don't you understand. Look at a lot of people came out. A, a, a few people came out in uh, Amu or Duffy, but the thugs sent them back. The, the thugs sent them back. So what are we talking about? You understand? So where you have a situation whereby, excuse me, I'm having a lot of distortion. There's we, there's another. We can hear you clearly. For me, no, it's distracting. We can hear you very clearly. Yeah, but I'm I'm saying I'm I'm hearing the results. I'm hearing the results being announced, you know, side by side. Oh, okay. So you see a situation, you see a situation whereby it, it, it is, it is, let me give an example. APC had already started killing themselves even before the election. So what does that send to the populace? What does that send to the electorate? You understand? Everybody, do, they don't want to come out because they don't know what they're going to meet. Look at our own boys that just went to the collective center to go to follow up, to follow up on their on, on, on their results. Look at his eyes. Look look at what they did to them. I have right. to tell them Let me get to the leave the place for you. Go because ahead, it's not worth. Please give one minute, please. Look at it. You understand? At the end of the day, do you want me to get our boys killed? Do you want me to get them killed? These people have guns. They have classes. They have everything. I cannot meet uh, on the field and tell them, even in Agege, look at what they did to our boy in Agege. And they had started this since Thursday. And then LASEC. When, is it LASEC supposed to advertise? I'm and, not too uh, sure. I'm not too sure this program, this program is for lamentation and uh, okay. giving so, information right. to the, and, to and, the and, public. And this is, All right, let me, let me pause you, Mr. It um, is the real fact. Mr. Doherty, let me pause you for a second, because I have very little time left, and I have a lot of questions to ask you. No, can I say let something me, real me, quick? Me, can I say something real quick? Yeah. yeah. Can I say something real quick? Yeah. To our gentleman from APC, yeah. NSTARS was just a small thing. NSTARS has already happened. This is when the people stand up. The opposition party cannot stand up against the this NSARS, NSARS Yes, we know. They have seven money, years they have of everything. Decadence by you your party at the national the level. NSAR, the NSARS was not NSARS solid. NSARS is there. The people will stand up against you. The people will stand up against you. Okay, all right. It is so, so let me, let me, let me. And your goons in the PDP let me, were responsible for the NSARS. Let me come in here as a moderator, because it's important that our viewers understand our conversation. They have to hear us. So let me pause everybody for a second. Let me let Nima ask a question, and then we move, we proceed. Yes, go ahead, Nima. At least I've experienced um, a few elections in my lifetime since I turned 18. This is the first time I hear voter apathy without hearing the effort that each party put in to encourage people to come out towards voting. So I'm, I'm sure party across board relied on their structure that they've had over the years to work for them without necessarily trying to um, encourage more voters to come out we voted in Amu Odofi and it was peaceful in my area. I didn't go out to vote, but my neighbors came and they gave me, came, came back to give me feedback on Saturday about how it was peaceful. But nobody did anything. It was just a few conversations I had with two of them that, ah, please try and vote, or I, I, I'm going to go and vote. And they didn't know I didn't leave the house on Saturday. So what exactly did each of you do across parties now to go to door to door? 2007, I remember the elections. They were knocking, for local government elections, they were knocking everybody's door in, in Obadori at the time in Alimosho to get people to come out to vote because we wanted to present somebody to represent our, our council in the local government at the time. So what exactly did you do as party members, aside relying on those of your party registered members who are who, 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 the numbers that you have already calculated to work for you? to win more voters, to go to people's houses, to encourage them to come out. And this does not involve giving Let them Let me start more. with Mr. Um, Chaye, then we'll come to Mr. Doherty. OK, let, let me tell you, Lagosians are clearly in the know that the real election was the premise of APC. Picking the APC ticket was the real election, where it was trying to talk about volatility of our primaries and the rest of it. Well, what you will call volatility was, I mean, would be what I'll call keenly contested party primaries. We knew as a party, our members were aware, our aspirants were aware, was picking our tickets was as good as winning the elections. So it was bound to be keenly contested. And would you lay this blame at his door? The opposition, the ineptitude, the fact that you're not providing any alternative, the fact that your party over the years continued to give the same excuses for your perennial losses, which is already well-established in your DNA as a party. 
you, you would see the turnout for our primaries. And let me also register that this was an unusual election. We're, we're missing that part. An election having during the pandemic, as a state and as a ruling party, we're, we're quite mindful of the limits of our massive campaign, gathering huge crowd, not being mindful of the COVID-19, social distancing, admonition, and the rest of it. So there's a limit to what you can do in terms of campaign. But how do you address a party that could not even provide agents or polling units, and the only excuse okay. you can give is voters who are turned back? That was not reported in any media. It's just a figment of his imagination. And I, I really pity Mr. Duarte, who is also occupying a, a seat where his predecessors failed massively. All it's right, Mr. Olajide, let me pause you for a second. Let me come to the neutral man, because when we hear politicians talk, we, uh, it's always very, uh, it's, it's, a, it's really when you hear both parties speak. Let me come to you, Mr. Nwagu. From what has been said so far, um, what's your take on what the parties did or did not do towards this election? That's one. And secondly, the issue of local government autonomy that has been debated across board and, and, and people are still talking about it. In your view, could you, could you, could you, do you think that might be part of the reasons why people don't take these local government um, elections um, seriously? Because they feel that, hey, they are, they are, they are really powerless, quote unquote. They don't really have much to do uh, within the scope of things, within politics. Is that what you, do you, do you think that could be a reason why we, have, we experienced apathy today and last weekend? Well, uh, for your first question, I, I think um, the, the governing party will approach, approach the election with a lot of arrogance. And uh, the opposing political parties appear to be despondent um, in, in the sense that they have, have thrown their hands in the air. But election is a competitive enterprise. And what needs to happen is that even if there is a dominance of a political party, history is replete with um, uh, where, where political parties have upturned uh, and, 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 and driven away uh, position parties through hard work, through intensive engagement with the citizens. We are not seeing a lot of that. What we are seeing, even among the citizens, is that Especially the if you are if you the Yoruba want to print on want to have come all those kind of conversations are despondent conversations. We need to get the citizens to be conscious of the fact that in the twenty local governments in Lagos and thirty seven LCDAs that people will begin from any any time from from uh, going forward will continue to preside over your lives. They will bring out policies that, whether you approve of them or not, will be implemented. And one of the ways to make sure that you are not interested is to continue this narrative of they have taken everything and uh, there is nothing we can do. There is so much we can do. We need to get the laws that govern elections, especially from the legal status of assembly, to, to bring guidelines and put out those guidelines in a way that citizens can be aware of them. Election just ended on Saturday. The new election starts immediately. The work to, to get citizens to be interested should start immediately by all stakeholders. And in, in, the, in the stakeholdership of elections, you have the political parties and their candidates. You have the election management body. You have the voters and the security agents. All of us must begin the work to make sure that our people are interested in you know, governance and the things. There is no right. excuse that is enough, that is reasonable to, to, to get that. Then on the local government autonomy, the challenge of local government autonomy is based on, first and foremost, the fact that my sister, who is a journalist of repute, was at home on Saturday. It was our neighbors that were telling her <laughs> that the <laughs> election was going on. <laughs> and I announced it, sir. So please don't come at me, please. Please, let me... I have a comment. <laughs> Nima already expressed that she had a major health issue, and um, someone sent a message. Messages concerning the topic. Um, person says, politicians are not concerned about voter apathy. Um, they are actually happy with the situations, and listed a few reasons for low turnout. It says, NSAS saga still in the minds of many youth. Imposition of wrong and seemingly unqualified candidates. 
the fear of violence was very high. That there was discouragement due to delay of voting materials arrival and emotional tiredness from hunger. I said I was going to read it out because when we don't I, I, um, analyze the reasons, if we don't concretely analyze the reasons for voter apathy, we cannot solve the problem. And as long as we don't encourage voters to come out to choose who the candidates would be, then we don't have a democracy. And this is very, very important. Sadly, in my own area, I didn't see any um, campaign material from PDP. I have to say that. Um, I did not see any. I saw Accord, and obviously APC was everywhere. Accord That's for counselorship, the posters. I saw campaign posters for Accord Counselorship Party. A lady came out, and she actually had her posters everywhere. So we have to yeah. run, because, I mean, we have, we, unfortunately, we can't take any more of this. But it goes back to what the APC spokesman was saying, that, listen, we need a strong opposition mm -hmm. in Lagos State. Yes, they, they are a minority party, I understand that very clearly, but there has to be some kind of strength because why didn't we see a lot of PDB posters across the town? Mm -hmm. Let people even know that, listen, this party is here. Right, like, elections was, are too expensive. Yeah, yeah elections I think are Basek too expensive. said it also. Elections are, even lo at local government level, elections are too expensive. Yeah. So There are lots of false factors. Yeah, yeah, but I also think that we need to stop blaming the usual and be more creative. Where there's no money, you have to bring in creativity. Door -door I feel campaign. that door-to-door -door campaign and appealing to, to youth in such a way that, you know, you engage yeah. them. Yeah. And then they take ownership of this. But to just say, well, we've given up. They have taken over everything. We need, I mean, there's, for me, in my opinion, I think this even gives you more room as a minority to make a difference. On that note, we have to wrap. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming. We'd like to thank Mr. Shayola Dejo, spoke, um, spokesman for APC Lagos State. Mr. Deji Doherty, uh, also the chairman, PDP, and Mr. Ezinwa Nwagu, um, the executive director of PACA. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us this morning. It was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you. Thank that, you. That's all we can take on the show. See you tomorrow. Bye for now.